Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to each of you. It is absolutely my pleasure to introduce to you for the Consciousness and Healing Initiative webinar, none other than a dear friend, a colleague, and uh, just an incredible being, Reverend Tiffany Barsotti. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Tiffany, um, and then also Tiffany, love for you to share with us some of your background. For those of you who might have caught Tiffany in the Reuniting Science and Spirituality Summit that we did um, last year, you got to, to get a sense of her, but Tiffany comes with um, such an incredible background. She's a healer, she's a spiritual counselor, she's a scientist. She did her training among many places at Holos University directly with Norm Sheely and Carolyn Miss. Uh, so she comes to us with a background in medical intuition, um, in training with the BioWell, um, and has really been forwarding the field for many decades, both as a practitioner and a scientist. So, Tiffany, it's lovely to have you on board with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shalmini, and thank you for creating such an amazing, robust platform for us all to learn from each other. It's, it's very meaningful, and this thank is the you. direction I think that we all need to be going in to support, so appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. It's really great. It's a lot of fun for me because, you know, I get to learn from my friends and share their wisdom uh, with friends. It's it's really incredible, the confluence of wisdom that we have in the community. And so thank you for being part of that. And today, a very timely topic mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> as we approach holiday season and the busyness of life around the season and the joy and the agony, all of it. <laughs> We're going to be talking about moving from drama into empowerment and tell us more about this. Mm. So it, some people here may be familiar with the, and Stephen Cartman in 1968 came up with this design essentially by being a, as a psychiatrist, um, tapping into family dynamics and mostly dysfunctional family dynamics. And so he coined the phrase of the drama triangle. And there have been different versions that have been out there um, proposed by different people, but pretty much uh, if, if some people who studied psychology get this in their training and some people don't. So I don't know like who actually gets this kind of training. I did it, Holos, and I was very frustrated with it. So it, it gives you the, and I'll share slides in a little bit, but it's the, the victim, rescuer, and persecutor. And what it's essentially saying is, is that, that if you're on one part of the triangle, then you're bouncing around and going to different parts of the triangle. And so it's like this, I call it a seductive loop of dysfunction and also the insaneness of sameness because you end up just creating this sort of loop effect. And honestly, I mean, that's how our emotions are created as well from when we're children. So this dynamics continues to play itself out and everybody gets in their role but they don't stay in their role. They switch back and forth. So, you know, somebody who's been the rescuer long enough usually gets pissed off and it, it starts to, you know, put them in the persecutor role. And so you end up bouncing around and then the, the victim gets their, their panties in a wad, should I say, about getting upset about things when they can't control. Another way of also saying about the drama triangle is it's the blame game and the control game. So many of us are looking for places to blame and control because it feels awful to have taken full responsibility for everything that, that happens, but that's kind of the need is for us to take a deeper look at ourselves. You know, my tagline is know thyself, heal thyself, right? So this is great. And did you mention that you have some kind of a graphic that you wanted to show yeah. us that kind of takes us through this? I think that would be helpful because, you know, you named a lot of different aspects of being on the drama triangle. And, you know, I've had the the pleasure of like kind of experiencing this full teaching with you at some of the Free Your Energy Transform Your Life workshops that we've done. Um, I love that visual. And so it might be cool to bring it up on screen just to make sure we're all following um, along. I thought I knew where to go. And the share is just say, saying for me to share the event. So how do I? Oh, interesting. I don't seem to be able. Is Jason in here with us to help? Jason oh. is, um, although his ability probably to help us with a sh screen share at this moment. Um, okay. might be difficult. How else can I do this? Let's see. Oh, you guys, I'm sorry. Well, I'll tell you what, if the huh. screen share is a problem, then um, what we can do 
we'll of course offer the handouts to everybody after the webinar so we can show it to people that way. Definitely. A, um, have no problem. Okay, so that's an asked question. That's really strange because we've done this before and I've had, there's an option to share. Yeah. Usually when you go to the top oh, of your I screen. Found it. I found yeah. it. Good. Okay, great. Okay, application window. Let's do this. And I wonder if it's going to. Um, there we go. We can if, see it. Yeah. yeah. Should I go into presentation mode or is this okay? I think this is fine. Okay. Um, yeah, I think okay. this is fine because we can see you and we can see this beautiful graphic that you've got here. So you've got here the drama triangle blame and control game. Yep. Right. So I've, I've been working with this for a number of years now. And like, I, I have my own version of this. I've, like I mentioned in school, we were taught this, but I was so incredibly frustrated and I'd love to hear from some of the other people who are trained in psychology. And in your training, did you get this training at all, Shamini? We never got into the drama triangle and all that. You know, I graduated from the joint doctoral program at UCSD, SDSU. It was a very, very cognitive behavioral therapy mm -hmm. influenced program. In fact, actually, I was <laughs> I, I pushed to do my internship training with Steve Hickman in mindfulness at that time. It was a new thing. So well, that'll kind of give you an idea of, you know, a lot of the training programs don't go into these aspects, um, but so helpful, you know, to yeah. learn. Yes, truly. And you're such a pioneer having done that so early on. So the, the drama triangle, like I said, from Stephen Cartman in 1968 and the way that he was, he was also a transactional analysis therapist. So he was very much looking at the behavior of people and the roles that they play. Um, internal family systems also do role playing. You know, there's a whole gestalt that sort of goes with this. Um, I cleaned up this slide because, as you know, you've seen it, and I'm, I'm going to be sharing it with all of the, the Chi audience as well it, as a handout. And it's it's a lot to go through. So what I'm going to do is just sort of establish some of these roles so that you, we can recognize when we are on this, because the whole point is to recognize and catch. Willingness is in step number one, because willingness is we're already willing. We're having this conversation. You're here reading this, you're hearing this, the willingness is there. Then the next thing is about the awareness. The awareness is really uh, can be a pain because we can continue being aware of our what choices we're making, the relationships that we're keeping, et cetera. But now becoming aware of exactly the dynamic, the things that we might say, the things that might be the tipping point that actually put us on the drama triangle. So the victim is, you know, the essentially all of what needs to happen here is appropriate boundaries. And it, this is all a game of manipulation. Everybody is in their role and they are comfortable in their role. And that's the exchange of places sometimes that causes also the, the, the tension that can emerge. But essentially what we wanna do is ask ourselves some questions. So when you feel yourself, I know I, I, know I have caught myself being in the victim role, like saying certain things like, why is this happening to me again? Mm. What, you know, that, that's, a, that's a victimizing st to myself statement. Like what, what if I, mm -hmm. how, what did I do? It's, that's a more empowering statement. What did I do to get in this position? Because now we're asking another question, but like, why do I always, or why do you always? It's, mm -hmm. you know, that puts us on this victim kind of angle. Mm -hmm. And essentially, what we want to do is ask a question, but the victims usually are less self-reflective. So I'm going to move over to the rescuer in order to illustrate a point here. Okay. The rescuer and the, the victim often play hand in hand. The rescuer gets to be in a jump and feel that there's, oh, there's security within that. There's a lot of codependency. And most of us, there's a lot of healers that are part of the Chi community. And I like to describe our, ourselves, uh, I'll just include myself in this, but I see it a lot also in the community that we're recovering codependents or need to be recovered. Sure. And, <laughs> and the empathy, and, go ahead. If, believe it or not, there are many people in the community that don't really understand what codependence means. Um, so could you offer, you know, for those who are less familiar with the term, sure. what, do we, what do we mean by codependence exactly? So it means that we're putting everybody else's needs ahead of our own and then judging our value against how well did that go? 
with that exchange of a person. That's a very simple, simple way of saying it. Mm -hmm. Codependency has a lot of tentacles. And what we tend to do is um, figure out, oh, that I got some like good girl from that kind of behavior that I did. You know, I, I, I don't mean to push any buttons, but I do tend to do that sometimes. Churches, the way they're set up are very codependent. You feel like if you do something within the church that some good will come back to you. So that's a, another kind of relationship. I've seen it in many healing groups that I've been a part of. We need you to be in this role and this is your job for no pay, no exchange, no exchange of energy even. Just like, like this is, this is what you're doing because this is what your community needs. So, so, so could, would it be safe to say like codependence is also kind of a transactionally based relationship where you're putting your worth based on what you're doing for others? Correct. So there's a, there's a, there's um, self worth things that are going on here that is that are driving that behavior. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So long as you do this and I do this, then I know I'm in my right job. I actually have as part of the slides sort of the mindset and the things that we say to ourselves. So um, I'll drop down to persecutor here in a moment and uh, right now, and then I'll move to that slide because I think it'll be very helpful to discuss sort of the narrative, the yeah. story that we tell ourselves. Right. Because the whole point of this is to have awareness about, God, it's so pervasive and it's so in our operating system and it's gonna take conscious choice in order to get out of this map so to speak but it's a map to know we're good it is not the holy grail in fact <laughs> <laughs> i make the the triangle in this angle so that it looks like a vortex going downward because it's a loss of energy mm -hmm. and meanwhile mm -hmm. when we get into the empowerment or surrender triangle it's going the other way so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll illustrate that in a moment Thank the persecutor you. is somebody who's always angry and they control the conditions by their emotional over outbursts, usually anger outbursts. And ultimately it's part of the, the same manipulation in the game, but you know, especially you'll see a lot where the victim and the persecutor are, are getting into it because neither one of them can be wrong. Neither one of, they have a very difficult time taking responsibility for the position that everybody is in, in that moment. So that becomes a, a real line of tension. Oftentimes you will see children be come in and be the rescuer. Mom and dad are fighting and kids will come in and like, please, please make up because kids always think that everything is their fault. Mm -hmm. So this is a lot where codependence will also start to really take hold because we see, oh, Mom might may, may have, see what you're doing to the to the baby, see what you're doing to our kid, or the dad may say that as well. So you're setting up this sort of exchange and it's learned behavior. So if the parents stop fighting, there's a reward in that for the child that 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 just intervened. Mm -hmm. And that's still a no-win situation. But what we grow up learning is that that pattern and habit worked. It stopped the fighting. The outburst. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sometimes, it doesn't always, because somebody who's, let, let's say, a narcissist and, and is a persecutor, they, they usually need something else. By the way, let me just say that the narcissist also needs some empathy. Usually what breeds narciss narcissism is a lack of nurturing, nurturing by mother. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a, a whole line within that. But let me, let me move to the next thing here, because this is where the narrative is. So the role of victim is like, poor me. I need somebody to do something for me on a regular basis so that I can feel good. What the victim ultimately needs to ask themselves is what do I need? And the exchange between the, the victim and the rescuer, the more empowered conversation is instead of the rescuer jumping in to go fill that need mm -hmm. is to say, ask the victim when they're being in that place, what do you need? And oftentimes the response will be the, from the victim, I need you to behave differently, to go and wash all my laundry, wash, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, sometimes it can, <laughs> it can be slave-like. Um, so there's this, it, and that's where the, the kind of almost a blame comes in. I need you to do this in order for me to feel better. And that's, that's where it also gets very seductive. 
-hmm. So what's happening inside the mind of the victim is that they're avoiding what they don't want to experience in themselves, but they don't know that. This game so far has been working. And what's really going on deep inside is that they're scared, they're oppressed, they're feeling helpless and powerless to do anything. And sometimes there's a little, they're ashamed, but they're also proud that they've been able to get people to do things for them. So it's, a, it's an interesting kind of um, dynamic and conundrum that plays within the mind of, of being the victim. The secondary gain is that they don't have to take responsibility for themselves or their behavior or choices, and it's much easier to blame. So let's say a more empowered exchange would be if the victim and rescuer in that back and forth, I need you to go do all my grocery shopping for a week and it's terribly inconvenient, but the rescuer says, I, I need you. Why do you need me to do that? Well, because I can't do it. I'm, I'm got this going on, this going on, this going on. Well, if it's mm -hmm. not convenient in a person's life and we're trying to do something obligate out of obligation, that is the first clue to know. Just you, so we have to learn this very powerful word of no, because it's an appropriate boundary that needs to be set at times. Yeah. So then this, this sort of back and forth, what can happen is, I'm sure you can figure it out. I'm not going to be the one that solves it for you this time. And then, you know, it's like, wow, this enabled behavior all of a sudden is going to shift and change. So there's going to likely be some tension. So we just have to. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds me a lot of, you know, kind of a parent child relationship in that to that degree where the kid is saying, you know, it's a young kid who's scared to do something or doesn't want to do and I can't do it. I don't know how I don't, you know, and as a parent, you say, I believe in you. I know That's you great. can do this. You know? exactly so it, it sounds very similar. And yes, we see these dynamics play out in adulthood as well. Right. So, I mean, I, yeah. It, right. So basically, you know, one of the things if we start exploring this as dynamics, I know you've said, Tiffany, we're all of these things at different mm -hmm. times and in different yeah. situations. Right. Because it's all it's very much a dynamic. Um, yes. and, and these aspects of our personalities will come out in different situations. So is it safe to say then sometimes we'll recognize ourselves as the victim or the persecutor or the rescuer? Absolutely. Absolutely. 100 percent, because you actually and that's the whole thing is you want to be able to recognize that you're acting in a persecuting way. We don't just stay in our corner. We move around. So and in that that ex, um, example that you just gave about a child, the example you gave is the child being the victim. I can't do this. I need mm -hmm. you to do this for me. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes moms will jump in because it's where they feel like, oh, my gosh, I'm a value. This is I'm, I'm really having a bonding with my kid. <laughs> you're, you're bringing me back to last night when I was working with Suhani on her homework. <laughs> Absolutely. And I noticed that tendency in myself to jump in and rescue. Absolutely. And it's natural. It's yeah. natural. But we've gotten nurturing a bit mixed up with rescuing. And to have the conversation of trust, which is so essential. There's, there's a whole other thing we could do on trust that is having to do with the inner child. Uh, between the ages of an 11 and 14, my, a very important conversation really ideally would be had, but with the child and parents to say, I believe in you and I trust you and all the decisions you make are for you, not for me. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's, that's getting off point, but um, I'll continue on here. So the persecutor in the narrative is that it's all your fault. The victim can play in that too. These are all very interchangeable. So it's, and it's controlling, like pushing everybody's buttons in order to get a rise. Somewhere along their path, they, they usually learned that if I pushed enough buttons in people, they would get the attention that they want. So mm -hmm. that becomes how they start to interact in a dynamic and especially in a family dynamic. But this shows up in politics. This shows up in our business relationships. This shows up in our friendship relationships. It, it, it can show up in any type of relationships. And it's really interesting as you watch kids grow up and go through this too. And if they had this as sort of a map, because we don't need to stay on this triangle. In fact, that's, we need to get off of it. So the, the punishing, um, the, the persecutor is, is really into punishing. And it, they're punishing because they didn't get their way. And one of the empowering questions to ask, ask the persecutor 
is what are you so angry about? What has you so upset? And they usually just fume a little bit more, mm -hmm. but there's something that starts to have a reflection. If you ask it enough and both the victim and the rescuer can ask the persecutor until the persecutor starts asking it of themselves, what am I so mad at? What the heck is going on here? And then usually just even in, in inviting that question, we can start to bring on the awareness of, oh, that thing happened, it reminded me of this, and then it was a triggering of events that made a catalyst of, you know, this explosion. Mm -hmm. So that blaming, righteousness, superiority, authoritative, they feel if they're not in that role, that they are weak, unenabled. And this can also take on a kind of a bullying type of um, frame of mind, mindset and the experience of it to another person. So we want to be able, oh, this is, this is weird. Some of my, um, my new, oh, something didn't update, but anyway, it, it's still, it's still relevant that the persecutor has this, I need to assert my power. I have to prove that I'm right because my worthiness is based on me being correct. And I need to have your power too, usually. So it's like this kind of overtaking of power and control. And I have to prove that I'm better and that I deserve to be in this like high and mighty authoritative position. This can be men and women. I've seen women mm -hmm. do, do this as equally as men. Mm -hmm. So the rescuer is, let me help you. And if you, it's this idea that obviously if I can come to your rescue that you're that they're going to feel better about themselves and they also feel guilty that if they don't go to somebody's rescue mm -hmm. so that's a very interesting kind of dynamic that we can watch in ourselves it's very subtle how this can be played out and essentially what they're doing is they're dodging looking into their own issues the things that are bringing up their anxieties, the things that, that trigger them into a response. And the way I also describe anxiety is that it's a lot of emotions that have led to anxiety, not anxiety as a single mm -hmm. emotion. So this is, um, it's an important thing to tease out that there's usually because the rescuer will get really angry. And it's like that, you know, Eileen calls it the stuff and blow, right? That mm -hmm. they're just bringing it in, bringing it in, and then and yeah. that will oftentimes be the the rescuer. So and we're talking a lot about, I'm sorry to, to no. interrupt. Uh, it sounds like a lot of this is undigested emotion, mm -hmm. um, a lot of behavior patterns that come out of um, a sense of worthiness, you know, being on, you know, kind of related to what others think or do or don't do. Yeah. Right. And so, th so those are some of the things. And now you're also teaching us that we can, recognize these patterns in ourselves by looking at the narrative that we're telling ourselves. So when we're getting into the narrative of blaming others, or we're getting in the narrative of needing to jump in and fix things, or we're getting into the narrative of, you know, poor me, yeah. um, that gives us a sense that we're somewhere on this triangle. Exactly. I've oh, Shamini? Let me... to close message hover to hide here oh do we lose we lost her i can't tell i'm going to stop sharing so i can see what's happened how do i stop sharing one sec uh oh okay maybe she'll come back in can i get a thumbs up if people are still hearing me Um, I can hear you, but Shamani is frozen. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to continue. Maybe there's a way of reloading the, the video. Okay, cool. She'll come back in. And I'm going to go back into here. <laughs> Technology. Sometimes. Do we get uh, us all back? Okay, maybe not. All right. What I wanted to say here, in addition to, I really am interested in, in hearing Shalmani's point, is that 
it ultimately this is the need to feel needed, the need to feel wanted. And we all have a need for belonging and the need to feel worthy and be in our role in lives. It's just that this way of doing it is very, it's dynamic, but it's not a healthy dynamic. So we wanna make that transition. Oh, Shamini, do we have you back? Yeah, I hope so. Can you see oh, me and hear me? I can't, I can't, yes, yes, all good now. Yes, I am seen and heard. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Usually we don't have them, but you know, it is uh, Christmas time, full moon, and you know, who knows? There's a lot of high energy running around. So high energy is right. Exactly <laughs> Thank you right. everyone else for your patience. Oh, and I also want to remind y'all, those of you who are new to the platform, we will leave some time for questions. So if you have a specific question for Tiffany, I'll invite you to go down to where it says ask a question and you can type it in. And if you see something that someone else wrote that's almost exactly what you wanted to ask, you can upvote it. And I will go to the questions at the end and, and make sure to ask your question for Tiff. Um, but Tiff, thank you. Yes, yeah, so you're, you're showing us the blame and control games here with the victim, persecutor, and rescuer. Yeah, so I think we've pretty well covered this and you were hearing that part too. This is way too busy of a slide. This is just an example of what you'll get when I, we send the email so that you can know what right. questions you need to ask. And funny enough, I have families that I'm about to give you the solution as well and to give you a little story about how this came to be. But the um, I have families that take two copies from me, the front and the back of my handout. And they oftentimes will have their kids run to the refrigerator where they have it put up. And it's like, mommy, you're here. Or Dad. Oh, that's great. Yeah, believe so, me, we've talked about doing that here at home as well. <laughs> In fact, I did put it on the refrigerator. Someone took it off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's funny. You maybe put a camera on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm, I'm just going to move into some of the solution as well, because right. what I like to say here is our mission, should we choose to accept it, is to move towards conscious choice. And that really is getting into more of an empowered space. And I also want to um, dislodge any uh, uh, kind of misnomer ideas about what surrender is. And I, I've got a slide for us to discuss on that too. Um, but I, I just, there's, surrender can be a trigger word for people. And it's just been interesting to observe that in people. So your choice is to become empowered and inspired actually, because this is really about it taking inspired action. So the idea is to get off of the drama triangle and stay on the surrender triangle. Now, let me back up for a moment because I mentioned already as in school, we learned about the drama triangle, but there weren't solutions off of it. We did loads and loads of processes, but we don't always have time to process things right then and there. It's like, you know, I have a journal filled with things I need to be processing, but we need also some easy off ramps, on ramps and off ramps to be able to get out of these kind of triggered environments. So one day in a total fit, I just screamed to the high heavens and I was like, what the expletive is the key to get off the drama triangle. And mm -hmm. I had to sit down with a notebook. I was actually sitting, um, having this conversation on my way to the car and I had a pen and paper in there because whoosh, I got this, mother load of a download and it was first three steps let go letting go does not mean to acquiesce power letting go means to change your perspective to see it from a higher perspective mm -hmm. so we have to let go of our current perspective in order to don a new one having trust and faith that usually becomes a little bit of a um a challenge for people because it, around this time where we're in being in the the drama of things our trust and faith doesn't feel like that's all together, all that reachable. But this mm -hmm. is meant to be a crevasse that we start to cross and we learn better habits around. So trust and faith also gets questioned a lot here. What ultimately, especially if we were raised in a religious family, what do I have trust and faith in? Because what I grew up in isn't necessarily my same belief system anymore. So this requires a path of individuation to say, who am I on this journey and truly, what do I have trust and faith in? That's an internal going in. I've got to answer that question. 
And it there's a freeing from false securities that will ultimately fall out from that. Mm -hmm. So this, this part takes a little bit of work, but we can immediately just keep these ideas in our mind about, I need to let go of my current perspective. I am not acquiescing my power, quite the opposite, actually, because the most flexible person in the room ultimately is the most conscious and is the one that does control the conditions because they have the consciousness to be able to elicit the right responses. Super important. Mm -hmm. And then we want to move towards empowered surrender. This whole journey is a journey to unconditional self-love. And I, I love saying that we ultimately we need to learn to love, learn to love, to give love with the overflow of the love that we have for ourselves. So this is the journey of self-love in order to take this first so that we can have the appropriate responses to ourselves, to our loved ones, especially our kids, because we don't want them learning consistently the drama triangle. There's plenty of that out in the outer society that you're going to have time to parent against if you're not living the drama triangle in our homes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then the act of surrendering is really all about, it's being inspired. It's being able to say, thank you, not fuck you, not mm -hmm. just say you're, you're wanting to transcend. You're moving towards a, a new paradigm, a new way of relating both to people and information. And so it becomes our choice. How is it that we are going to respond within that? This is great. You know, it's it's just wonderful. It's the movement as you articulated so beautifully, you know, to surrender is not giving up control, but expanding the sense of self to something that is broader so that you understand that the there's not as much need for ego control in the situation, which is what drives so much of the behavior in the in the drama triangle, right? Exactly. Exactly. Now, here's a question for you. This is the question I had for you before I got frozen, which is energetically are there things that we can do like so we can notice for example when our thoughts are driving us or reflecting a behavior pattern that's consistent with being on the drama triangle are there things that we can do energetically and we tap into ourselves into our bodies that could help us understand whether we're kind of in you know automatic reflexive drama triangle mode and are there things that we can do energetically to move us from the drama triangle to the surrender triangle to open ourselves up to this larger sense of self and wisdom trust and surrender mm, love the question <clears throat> one of the first things i like to teach or that i do myself <clears throat> excuse me is ground i'm i'm wanting just to be aware of my own container first because the actions that we take, we, we've got dominion over. So if we can remember to ground, and I like to do grounding from my waist, not my feet. My, my, the feet are included and the legs are included, but the whole trunk, I like to envision a tree where the whole trunk is literally the trunk and then the, the root system is really at the waist. So there's this deepening, there's a slowing down when we think of that. So energetically, I like to say, put things in slow motion. Because, and this is where the awareness piece comes in because we will notice that we will, how quick, how fast we will fly to the same place because these are the way our neurons and our synapses have been communicating for our whole lives. Mm. So just, just to give ourselves the command, leave it, <laughs> like a dog command, mm -hmm. leave it, drop it, calm, space just easy so these are some energetic these are you know kind of mantras you can say to yourself and i the energetics because i don't i don't find that shields always work especially if we're in a toxic yes i use shields if i'm walking into a hospital yes i use shields if i'm going into um, churches and different things like that, where there's like a whole bunch of energy that likes to climb on. But as far as like shielding from family, where you've got so much of your emotional patterns that are playing in and with another person, this is where I find that shields don't work because there's a match, there's a resonance and there's a resonance for the purpose of evolving and healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's what I say is to ground, be aware of my own container. And then I'll use dog commands, leave it, drop it, just give space, breathe, breathing, becoming aware of your breath, becoming aware of dropping in in that regard. Yes, that is absolutely essential. 
essential. Wow. That's beautiful. So there are ways that we can tap in energetically. I, I believe, and here's the narrative here. Uh, I'll quickly uh, cover this so that we can get into some questions and answers after I give some just some key steps. Did you have something more you wanted to add to that, Sean? No, not at all. No, oh. go, go forth, please. So the, what I'm calling the empowered surrender triangle is because I, I feel like it, surrender needs to have a little bit more understanding. So that's just something that I've um, realized that there's an importance with being able to clarify what we mean by surrendering. So it's actually the role when we are in the letting go area, when we're first getting onto the drama triangle, is to realize that we are the change agent. And there, I bet you, there's a bunch of what are the so-called black sheeps of the family that are part of this community and joined with us here today. If you identify with that, I do too, but if you identify with that, that is a, a role that I call the change agent in the family, in the dynamic, because it's not meant to stay in the insaneness of sameness. We're meant to be the change agent. And so to realize that we are being that change agent as we let go, there's an empowerment piece that already starts to happen. It almost makes that leap a little bit easier. What I'm explaining here isn't necessarily easy. It's just important. And usually things that are important aren't always the easiest. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the narrative that we often tell ourselves is there's we're choosing a new possibility. We're choosing a new way of looking at something. And there's the, the letting go into like the mindset that we can dawn on is letting that we're letting go in order to make new possibilities, to make it for us to reach for something new as a new idea to mm. give ourselves a new experience. Mm. So the experience can be breathe, as, as we said, ground, um, use dog commands. Um, you want to give space and, and be able to start asking. Sometimes when we're really in the conundrum of things, it's really difficult to begin an asking process because it all feels so impossible, but mm. that's ultimately where we're getting to because we're ultimately asking for a new perspective that isn't our habit yet. Mm -hmm. Great point. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just essentially loosening that that dysfunctional bondage. We're, we're getting loose of the ties, the lassos that have been around our necks and ankles that pull pull us right into the drama of situations. So the the establishing trust and faith is actually being that change agent. It's taking action. And this is a, this is a practice of grace. This is something where we and what I actually like to use is the phrase of grace, space, and boundaries so that we are being more in a state of grace. We're not going to get there right away, but it can all of a sudden, there's a group of women that I, I work with in my office. And all of a sudden, the, the things that are happening where it's just like, wow, they would have never chosen that before. But all of a sudden, it's just like, they're just totally operating from love. And what a beautiful place. So it's about making new habits, this trust and faith. And it's it really is the practice. And you're challenging a status quo. You're challenging yourself in your own status quo. And you're challenging the dynamic of how it's played out in the past in the mm. status quo. So you're getting free from the trap. You're finding that new grounding and new footing, a new your, new, your container in how it is that you respond. Remember, every thought creates a hormone, right? So everything that we are interacting with creates a whole cascade of information that is now disseminated throughout the body for mm -hmm. the body to deal with. Is it cortisol? Is it adrenaline? Is it some where you're being shut down and you don't have any dopamine running? There's no oxytocin. There's no connection. You know, all of these hormones are definitely part of our response system. So if we change the way we feel, we will also feel more empowered. And being that change agent is being that inspired person, being at that pinnacle is help me, help me to, to connect. I can't do this by myself. Help me to have awareness because I cannot do this alone. So that's that asking part. And usually after we've been on this for a little bit, we will figure out that that's where the gray space and boundaries come. We feel empowered. We feel the ability to make conscious choice and ultimately feeling connected and inspired. 
I love that. It's beautiful. Thank you so much because you hit on something I think that is so important for us to recognize when we're on the drama triangle, you cannot get off of it by will. Not at least not by just pure will. I don't know if you would maybe you won't agree with me on that, Tiff, but you know, it's it's a letting go, right? So it's a letting go and there's grace, space and boundaries and part of the grace aspect is you know, that letting go aspect of recognizing that you can't control the situation, you can't control the other person, it's not your job to do so. And that's actually not the way to shift the dynamic. You cannot impose a shift of a dynamic by your will. It's it's the wills and the conglomeration of wills that have created the problem in the first place. Yes, right? exactly. And and when we talk about surrender, this is just the, the piece that everybody will get. I'm not expecting anybody to read it here. But when we talk about surrender, this is the, the slide I put together for us for discussing um, for the, it's thy will, thy will be done. But we, we put that with some religiosity and it makes us feel less than empowered. So it's this interesting dynamic that we're, I think we're very much, we're in the time now where people are waking up to how is it that I want to respond and I want to have consciousness around this, but yet I'm still triggered. It's something very real. And let me also say the healthy use of anger is to set boundaries. The healthy use of anger, we want to, anger comes up because usually some boundary within us was just crossed and we don't even necessarily even realize that that's what just happened and that there's an appropriate response to actually get angry about that. Now we want to catch it while we're realizing, oh, that's what just happened. And then we want to go for setting appropriate boundaries where needed without necessarily the emotion of anger necessarily tied to it, because that's just going to create more of that dynamic as well. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And that's where the grounding, you know, and uh, taking some space really helps so that you can recognize the anger, utilize it as the driving force to set a boundary where needed, but make sure you're doing that once you've actually processed the emotion and let it go. I mean, for the most effective things, again, you know, depends on the situation, right? If someone's attacking you in the street, you've got to respond right then and you know move forward but exactly yeah this is not about laying down this is yeah. about using appropriate skill and the appropriate consciousness and responses in situations not just being from an old uh reacting from an old reactive pattern so that's great that's exactly right so this is interesting i i the surrender misconception when i was you know i've been working on this for a long time but i've been playing with the the definition of surrender, and I think we need a new one. Um, that the typical one, when you look up in, in any dictionary, is the cease resistance to an enemy or opponent and submit to their authority. Well, that's very much a wartime kind of definition. And it's interesting, especially when we think about the politics and the drama triangle, how much that keeps us in wartime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, there is a lack of consciousness and, and there, there's a whole interesting thing with some of the history that we don't really have time to get into now. I will also, just as a, to put out there, I will be teaching a course that will be ongoing. So um, I'm just creating the modules for it now for helping people with the drama to the surrender to empowered surrender triangles. Fantastic. Yeah, so that'll be launching in January and then I'll hold monthly webinars so, so that I can always answer uh, do Q and A and deal with real live situations so that we're being empowered to make new choices. So just just as an aside, um, but this wartime idea, the reason why I was bringing that up is because there's a, a an interesting story around the drama triangle and what we learned in the Cold War about how it was that all of us within our entire continent or countries were totally aware of what we thought was going on but when you put everybody in the room that wasn't have anything to, having anything to do with actually the war but just were the civilians dealing with it they had a totally different take mm -hmm. so anyway that that'll be a story i, I can it's, yeah it's interesting we don't recognize how much uh, sometimes our our culture informs even our science as you know Absolutely. we've had lots of discussions about the how we've conceived the immune system by using war, wartime metaphors and how limiting it is right? To exactly. think that way. Exactly. Yeah. So surrender from a Bible perspective, a religious or in spirituality or religion 
This is the, the definition I found. It means that a believer completely gives up his or her own will and subjects his thoughts, ideas, and deeds to the will and teachings of a higher power. It just, it went on and on and on mm -hmm. um, to a higher power. Surrender is a willful acceptance. There's that will word. And yielding to a dominating force and their will. So where's our will in that? Where is our ability to make choices? And this is also what I think it's um, kind of hung up in, in vows. And when we take vows, it's, it just feels like we're just falling, falling into somebody else's will. So as a theologian, mm -hmm. I, I have a whole teaching on vows to values to virtue, right? But that's, that's, that's another talk. Um, what I am proposing here for our discussion, as we move towards the age of grace, which is something I'm coining for, for us to move into, is we need more inclusivity uh, as a notion of surrender, that we have the ability to make empowered surrender means that we can operate from an individuated mindset as well as a group mind. Mm -hmm. and that's a sense of, it can give us a sense of oneness, but it's not oneness like it, an ungrounded oneness. This is meaning that we must know our individual reasons for taking action. What is our purpose? What's our motivation? And in the words of Carl Jung, that would be that we need to individuate appropriately before we can really do group consciousness and group mind well. Otherwise, we're back on the drama triangle. There's both, right? <laughs> wow, Tiff, thank you. We have a couple of questions. Okay. We're going to get to them now, if that's okay. So yeah. I want to remind folks, too, that if you that. can, please um, put your questions in the ask a question box, because sometimes we might miss them if you just put them in the chat window. So we'll start with the ask a questions, the first one that we have here, which I think you've clarified, Tiff, but I want to just, um, I want to honor this person's question. So is surrender having trust and awareness that whatever one is going through is a reflection of self to learn about the self. Is that what gets one off the triangle? Meaning one's triggers are where one's growth is. Nothing from the outside is to blame. Just learning situations for our review of self. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Christy. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's another question from Julie. Would you please share some examples when anger can be a positive means to get off the drama triangle? Share some examples when anger is a positive, yes. So let's say somebody has just done something very inappropriate. Um, I wanna choose something that's kind of light. Um, actually, well, it's, it's great when we can have an interaction and I can actually make it real time and available to, to that person, but um, a healthy you, a healthy boundary would be, I, if it's ideal, if you set it from the beginning to say, I don't want you to eat my food in the refrigerator. This is my food, but somebody may go ahead and do that because they just didn't mind the boundaries and they do it anyway. An appropriate use of getting angry is where you would say, this is not okay and you don't you don't need to like get in somebody's face about this but just let them know it's not okay i set the boundary and it's not that was not honored and also the actually the way i want to tell this is is more from a child's perspective because you'll see a child get really harumphy about things when they didn't get their way well that that's appropriate for in in child language in childville but in the ability to be able to interact as an adult when a child is there's no room for their anger to have gotten harumphy about something and they're not heard that child is going to have bigger and bigger outbursts of anger mm -hmm. because they were trying to establish something that you didn't that we didn't hear the subtle signs of that we didn't have that in that interaction 
Does that make mm-hmm. sense? It does. And I just want to, I'm just noting a comment from Mimi here in the chat window, which I think you, you'll you like, Tiffany, because you talk about mad, right? And you yeah. can tell us what mad means. Mimi says, anger can make you stand up for yourself and others when nothing else does. Sometimes getting mad is the only way you'll have the energy to keep going forward. And I'm thinking about your mnemonic here for mad, which, what is that? <laughs> it's me accessing determination. So mad can be me accessing determination, but the, yeah. the the discernment and the wisdom that we have to have is when we need to utilize that arousing energy, right? To set a boundary, to hold a boundary yes. in place or, you know, use that energy if we need to, if we can't find another way to get it, right? right. To, to set that boundary. Exactly. Right. That's exactly right. Here's a question from uh, David. How important would you say it is to merge the personal beliefs, religiously speaking, into a patient's therapy session so they can get into the surrender stage? A patient's therapy session. So I think this is completely appropriate for all therapeutic um, situations. And there's something I didn't quite grok there. So a patient's can you say that again? I don't see yeah. it. So yeah. Maybe. So it's how important would you say it is to merge the personal beliefs, religiously speaking, into a patient's therapy ses- session so they can get into the surrender stage? Yeah. So meeting people where they are is highly, highly essential. I don't have to tell you that. I'm sure you already know that. And putting things into language that they can understand. So much of our job as therapists and counselors is to create a bridge. And we're, and that person is seeing you for a reason. Otherwise, they would likely just be seeing a church counselor if they were feeling that their nerds, their needs could potentially be met there. So there, it feels to me that there would actually there's a challenge that's being welcomed, and just to so that you, you don't upset the apple cart too much. You want to use their language as much as possible with other points of view. You know, I like to say that let's not blame religion on God, that that was kind of a man-made sort of creation. And God knows how many interpretations there are of the Bible and all of the great texts. So this is being able to bring into a therapeutic setting when I'm working with somebody who's very Christian or Catholic or no matter what their belief system or indoctrination is, that I use the language that I know that they already are aware of and then give alternative meanings to it for them just to contemplate and then let them put it into action and see what happens. Let the proof be in their own life. If you give them something to do and to act upon, let the proof work out for them. Great. Yeah. So let them kind of put it in their own words, their own language, their own behavior. In their own behavior. So they can see what, if you're suggesting a new response, you can see, well, let's just, let's experiment. Let's, let's just see what happens here. Mm, I love it. But mm-hmm. well, we have another question from Sabrina who asks, any suggestions for dealing with a family member who thinks they are very spiritually, energetically evolved and simply setting he- healthy boundaries and yet still displays all the qualities of the drama triangle? <laughs> it's so common. People are oftentimes, you know, um, we have this saying of like, I said it to to Paul last night in a conversation. I don't want to just be rosy about this. I, I want to like see something for, for what it really is. Well, not everybody wants surgery. Not everybody wants to go into those depths. And so they, the advice is it would really be best if it was very specific to the condition in which you're operating in. But I would begin with, that's interesting, as as a a way in, because it just gives a pause. It just gives space. And that's interesting, depending on the tone and how you say it, can sound very judgmental or it can be like, oh, that's interesting. That's your take on this. And I've seen this a lot in, in the dynamics of people think that they get a little information or read somebody's books and like have this epiphany moments of they have all this clarity around their lives now, but they actually have not um, put it into motion in their lives yet. It's not been fully um, integrated. And so then they speak from these places where it's kind of like they don't really know, they don't really have the experience. So if you say to somebody, that's interesting, tell me about your experience when you did blah, 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 blah. 
and sometimes they get caught in the act and and caught in that and if they've got a lot of ego around it i'd say get out of that conversation just recognize what it is and then exit the conversation because you need to see things for what they really are as well mm -hmm. the most flexible person controls the conditions Mm hmm. That's great. Yes. The most flexible. I like that. The most flexible. And Rosalind always taught us the biggest aura wins. I think both are true. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can be flexible and have a big aura, you're in good shape. But <laughs> but the, to your point, again, you know, kind of reflecting on these key points that we learn about how to get ourselves off of the drama triangle and into the surrender triangle is uh, you know, one one concept we've danced around but haven't necessarily um, named is acceptance. Right. Yeah. So and and so part mm -hmm. of it is, you know, learning that the triangle is a dynamic, yeah. I would say. Right. The, the yeah. So recognizing where we fall in the dynamic and where others fall and recognizing that we've ultimately, you know, to have responsibility and control over our own behavior. It's right? so, so true. And, and here, let me put this up here because. You were seeing what I mean before, right? Yes. It's the steps. Yeah. I love it. Yes. Yes. So and this is. To, I really think that knowing thyself is a superpower. So um, in one of these, I have the word acceptance. So yes, it is because we're not going to go around changing people. And in fact, the people who are doing the spiritual bypassing and the purple washing of things, that is part of what they're trying to do, unfortunately, sadly. But we want to confront, we want to be honest with ourselves and with others and ask if that's true. Ask the, the situation, the voice that's coming to you and, and the situation that might be going on for our perception of something. Just ask, check in, because we want to be able to ultimately see it and, and be to make a better choice and then realize that we're co-creating in any of these experiences where we're interacting with another person. So we don't want to incur more negative karma. So we want to you know take it a step up. And once we know the truth, then we can decide on what it is that we want to create next. And then to evolve means that we are taking exactly the steps that we're talking about so that we're not stuck in the insaneness of sameness. So we're literally making new choices around that. I love it. Okay. So, yeah, and I, I'm going to be sending all of this so everybody will, will yeah, have. Thank you. These are, all of these that. slides will be available to Chi contributors and it will take just a minute uh, in a second and tell you also how you can learn more from TIFF. Great. Um, okay. How do I get back to, oh, there. Okay. Well, we're back did with I you. Close but the video? No. Yeah, you did, but the, I think it's okay. okay because we've got, um, you know, we've got. Well, it's it's on the video, so you know, it's going to be available during replay, and um, we've just got a couple of minutes. So I want to make sure people know, Tiff, how can they be in touch with you? You mentioned you're doing an online course in January. Mm -hmm. um, I know, you know, you've been featured in Gaia TV, and you've been part of the Reuniting Science and Spirituality Summit, and other things. You do a, a whole lot of things. What's the best way for people to reach you? So on my healandthrive.com website, H-E-A-L-A-N-D, Thrive, Heal and Thrive. And if you go there and uh, sign up and send a, an email there uh, uh, recognizing Chi, then we will know to send you this slide deck as well. So in addition to, you'll just have checks and balances here. We'll have, it, we'll have you covered from both ends. And then yeah. you can sign up for I hardly ever send anything out to anybody. So don't feel like you're going to get spammed to death because that's definitely not my style. But if you want to know what we're up to and different things that are going on and certainly a lot more of this information, I also have a video on there. I have a YouTube channel that explains the, the um, drama triangle and all of that. It's not going to go that's into great. the depth like, like I am going to in the course because I have just seen over the years that when I hand the handout, it's like, oh, okay, great. But there's a lot of information there. And sometimes people, we need we need to digest it and, and then make it into new habits. Absolutely. No, it takes time to digest it. And it's really great that you're going to be able to offer an in-depth version of this, you know, mm -hmm. because it's, it's really nice to be able to go through the examples and then to be able to interact with you on it, too, will be really valuable for folks. I can vouch for it. I've seen Tiffany teaching at our Free Your Energy Transform Your Life workshops. And, you know, it's pretty amazing what you can do. Um, I also want to thank everybody for joining and also for those of you who have already been Chi contributors. We are able to put these on 
Um, due to those of you who donate $5 a month or about the cup of a, a nice matcha green tea every month um, so that we can continue to hold these. And she contributors, of course, get access to all of these webinars in perpetuity, including all the handouts, as well as free monthly meditations, which we hope to get one from Tiffany herself hmm. uh, for the next one. And um, discounts to conferences and stuff like that. So if you are not a Chi contributor, we would humbly ask you to consider being one um, so that you can support us in continuing to do this amazing work and support our staff in putting them on. I really appreciate it. And um, gosh, wishing everybody really a lovely and amazing holiday season full of rest and love um, and you know, really the best of what relationships have to offer because they can be so nurturing, so fulfilling um, as we just continue to learn and grow through relationship. And Tiffany, thank you so much for taking your time during this busy holiday season you know, to enlighten us on some of these really key aspects of living. Yeah, so practice out there. Don't, don't get on the drama triangle. Say that's interesting, leave it, <laughs> whatever, whatever works for you. Just don't don't bite the bait. Make a new choice. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Thank you all. It was great interacting and I'll look forward to more. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Be well, everybody. Take care. Have a great weekend. Much love. Bye. Bye.